Nobody knows the troubles I've painted. Nobody knows my paintbrush. Welcome Reaper fans. Today I am painting Mumlack. This is a Reaper Bones Black miniature. This is the retail version and it has just been released by Reaper Miniatures. So I couldn't resist it and had to buy one. So I'll take it out of the box so we can have a little look-see. This is a nice miniature. Where's my little spinny spinner table gone? Oh, it's disappeared as always. There you go. This is what happens when you have a workshop like mine. You put something down and it disappears. It's like a damn TARDIS in here. <laughs> it's okay, I'll give you a little 360. This is a very beautiful miniature, but straight away I notice there's a gap there. I don't know if you can see it. Well, you can actually see it there. Nasty little gap. Going all the way around. Ooh. And also on the tail. That's not too good. I don't know if you can see there. I mean, definitely fixable, but it will need and around the ears as well. Oh dear. Yes, there's quite a few gaps on this miniature, so you will need to get your um, putty out. Again, I'm using the Valeco plastic putty. This will fill in all the little gaps. So there will be a little bit of work before I can actually start painting today. What I'm going to do is this miniature will be glued to a 100mm base boss base um, I will add my gravel to the bottom I will fill in these gaps and then we'll come back I'll put my primer coat on which will be a gray and then we'll go from there and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna get this bad boy painted up I've filled in the gaps now with the uh, Valeco putty um, what I've done now it, is I've also put some PVA glue all over the base this has got quite a large lip so what I've done is I want to use a larger gravel and with this larger gravel this will hide the step so what we do is we get the, the larger stones and we just plonk them along the edge or the rim of the the base this is where it was showing, like so, and those stones will then hide that lip. And then we just go over the rest of the miniature with a lighter mix of gravel. the excess go around the rim of the base with your thumb like so this will take off any excess and it'll leave the rim of the base nice and clean and that's your base done for the mumlack Okay, so my base coat is done. I used a nice grey. I used Army Painter Spray Paint, uh, Rattle Cap Primer, 
um, and it has dried and works fantastic with the Bones Black miniatures. Now I know many of you have trouble with the aerosol cans or the rattle can primers but so far all the Bones Black miniatures that I have used with a rattle can primer have worked fine and this one is the grey from Army Painter and it's a lovely coverage and works very well. So the next part now is I am going to cover all the skin areas and the base with a black ink wash by Games Workshop and I'll come back once I put the ink wash on and it's dry and then we can go into the next steps and the colour process. The primer is all done and dried now, the ink wash is on so now we get to the fun part. What I've got here, I've got some ghoul flesh, I've got some alien flesh, and I've got some splintered bone. I'm using a large dry brush, and I'm going to start with the dark and work my way to the lighter and blend the colors onto the miniature. So straight away, I'm going straight in with the ghoul skin and dry brushing over the bum of the bone. Just in the highest areas, trying to keep some of the recesses dark. Remember, it doesn't matter if you make a mess because it's all fixable with painting. What we're trying to do is get that main colour on to give us something to work from and the variations in colors I'm doing this nice and fast so the paint will stay wet and then I can blend in the other colors as well Taking off the paint from the brush, just keep on going. What we'll be doing is later on, that's when we do the hair of the elephant. So, all we're working on at the minute is the actual flesh tones. So, it's very simple. Starting with the darkest colours, now I am going to add some colour going into the alien flesh and going over the highest places again and we keep on doing this it makes it very simple and again mix some colors take the paint off going on to the highest areas of the muscles the fingertips all around and on his big fat bum there there you go Add in some more paint. And again. And don't forget that highest areas, like the tops of the ears there. Go take some paint off. Going on to the trunk. Now, light source would be on the top of the trunk there, so we want that lighter. Top of the muscles there. Just on the top of the belly. The thighs. The calf muscles, tops of the calf muscles. Add in a bit more paint. Now 
how we're going to go to the lighter. I'm adding a little bit of splintered bone in with the alien flesh. So get that good mix. Take it off the paint there. Oh yes, that's nice. starting to work together now and you're bringing out a lovely tone across the whole miniature and once this dries it will look superb it's just having some confidence in what you're doing just get that paint on there just remember the basics is you're going from dark to light dark to light highest areas you're gonna have that light source on the ends there okay just gonna do tops of the bum a bit more there we are there will be another ink wash again a light ink wash after I've finished the whole miniature to go over the skin, just to highlight certain areas. There we are, I like this. There we are. That to me is perfect. That's all I need for now. Maybe just a bit there. <laughs> So that's our skin. This will have a light, a very light brown ink wash later, and that will give a bit more colour, bring out some more shadows, and it will give a rich feel to the skin. So I will now fill in all the fur and the hair. Um, I will come back when I get to the tusks, and I'll show you what I'm, how I'm going to paint the tusks. Right, let's make a start on the tusks. Now, to begin with, with the tusks I found I had a mold line going all the way down the tusk so army painter do a nice little set of files um, the round file is what you need for the tusks and all you do is go along and you can file away that nasty mold line because nobody wants that mold line on your miniature and all you do is you go back and forth with the file and turn turn as you're going back and forth and that gets rid of all those nasty mold lines perfectly well. And there we are. As for painting, MSP um, Reaper, they do a tusk ivory, so you don't even have to worry about the colour. But what I'm going to do is I have some splintered bone and I'm going to add the tusk ivory and then towards the tips of the tusks I'm going to add a little bit of splintered bone and it's very fast and simple so I'll just show you now that's the tusk ivory just going to add a little bit of the splintered bone to lighten it up. So as it comes towards the end, I'm adding some more splintered bone and just going to the tips with the splintered bone and working in the tusk ivory colour. all we need to do for that once that has dried I'll use a brown ink wash just around the tips and that will give the warm effect to the tusk so here is the finished mumlack it came out lovely 
I used some field grey for the hair and then I highlighted with mossy green and cat's eye green. Um, I used gold of course for the axe and the jewellery, the earrings. I'll give you a 360. The base I've added some flock in, dry brushed with some stone effects. The hair turned out very nicely there. And it's got some dry brushing and cat's eye green is quite a strong green, but it really highlights the edges of the hair. You've got an idol as a axe, so I decided to do that in gold. A little bit of a Indiana Jones theme going to the bone handle there. The elephant's eyes is white with a black dot. Um, a tiny white pupil to give her an effect of a, of a reflection and then I added a gloss varnish just to finish the eye off. So this is the Mumlack, the new miniature from the Bones Black line and this is the retail version that you can buy from Reaper. I will show you what I'm going to be painting next week now. Next week's paint is Viridius. This is sculpted by Jason Webb. Absolutely gorgeous miniature. Should I say mini? It's huge, as you can tell, taking up half of my workspace. This will be next week's paint. I've already put him on to a 160mm base boss base and I've added some stones. But next week, I will be showing you a nice step-by-step -step guide on how to paint this amazing dragon. So, please tune in next week. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, then you can become my patron. All my patrons are added to the credits on each video so thank you for watching and until next time Okay, you can all go now, please. Leave me alone!